What is the first step a phlebotomist must take before drawing blood from a conscious patient? A. Put on gloves. B. Identify the patient using two identifiers. C. Disinfect the site. D. Ask the nurse to confirm patient identity. Answer, B. Patient identification using two identifiers, name and date of birth, is the most critical first step before any procedure. A phlebotomist arrives to draw blood and the patient is sleeping. What should they do first? A. Proceed quietly with the draw. B. Ask the nurse to wake the patient. C. Wake the patient and confirm identity. D. Skip the draw and return later. Answer. C. The patient must be awake and must confirm their identity to ensure accurate specimen collection. Which of the following is not an acceptable patient identifier? A. Full name. B. Room number. C. Date of birth. D. Unique hospital ID. Answer. B. Room numbers are not reliable identifiers as patients can be moved. What should a phlebotomist do if a conscious patient cannot verbally confirm their name due to a language barrier? A. Use interpreter services or hospital ID band. B. Guess based on chart. C. Skip the draw. D. Ask another patient. Answer, A. Proper identification can still be verified using interpreter services or matching ID bands. In an outpatient setting, how should a phlebotomist verify a patient's identity? A. Ask the patient to confirm name and DOB. B. Ask for insurance ID only. C. Ask the nurse for confirmation. D. Match name with scheduled time. Answer, A. Direct confirmation from the patient of name and date of birth is essential in outpatient care. What action should a phlebotomist take if a patient does not have an ID band? A. Proceed with verbal ID. B. Ask nurse to attach an ID band before proceeding. C. Draw a sample and label manually. D. Confirm with relative. Answer, B. No blood draw should occur without a properly attached ID band in inpatient settings. Which of the following is acceptable if a patient cannot speak? A. Proceed without ID. B. Use chart for ID. C. Match ID band with requisition. D. Ask roommate for confirmation. Answer, C. The patient's ID band must match the test requisition to verify identity. A patient states a different name than the one on the requisition. What should you do? A. Assume clerical error and proceed. B. Draw blood and resolve later. C. Recheck requisition and clarify with nurse. D. Label tube with both names. Answer. C. Any mismatch must be clarified with medical staff before collecting the specimen. Before a fasting blood test, the phlebotomist should always confirm. A. Medication history. B. Time of last meal. C. Sleep duration. D. Exercise routine. Answer. B. Fasting tests require verification that the patient has not eaten for the correct duration. Which of the following indicates proper patient preparation for a glucose tolerance test, GTT? A. Fasting four hours prior. B. Eating a large meal beforehand. C. Fasting for 8 to 12 hours. D. Drinking water with sugar. Answer. C. GTT requires 8 to 12 hours of fasting before the initial blood draw. What is the correct response if a patient refuses a blood draw? A. Proceed anyway if ordered. B. Report to physician and document. C. Discard the requisition. D. Call security. Answer. B. Patient consent is required.
Report refusal and document appropriately. A patient with dementia cannot confirm their identity. What should the phlebotomist do? A. Skip the draw. B. Use ID band and verify with nurse. C. Ask another patient. D. Proceed with draw immediately. Answer B. When verbal confirmation is not possible, cross-checking the ID band and confirming with staff is necessary. Which document is essential before blood collection in an inpatient setting? A. Insurance form. B. Signed consent form. C. Test requisition. D. Chart notes. Answer. C. A properly filled test requisition is required to guide and verify specimen collection. A patient claims their date of birth is incorrect on the requisition. What should you do? A. Proceed with collection. B. Change it yourself. C. Confirm with nurse or ordering physician. D. Ignore and label manually. Answer. C. Any discrepancies must be clarified before collection to avoid identification errors. What type of patient prep is needed before collecting a cholesterol test? A. 2-hour fasting. B. 24-hour fasting. C. 8-12-hour to 12 hour fasting. D. High-fat meal before test. Answer. C. Fasting for 8 to 12 hours is typically required for accurate lipid profile testing. Which of the following tests requires the patient to be at rest for at least 30 minutes before collection? A. Troponin. B. Cortisol. C. ACTH. D. Renin. Answer. D. Renin levels are affected by physical activity and posture, resting prior to collection is necessary. What must be verified before drawing blood for blood cultures? A. Antibiotic use and site sterility. B. Patient's temperature. C. Last meal. D. Hemoglobin level. Answer. A. Blood cultures must be drawn with a septic technique, and antibiotic timing can affect results. If a patient is not wearing an ID band, and the phlebotomist is pressured to draw, what is the best response? A. Refuse and notify supervisor. B. Proceed to avoid delay. C. Get verbal ID and proceed. D. Ask another staff member to confirm. Answer. A. Drawing without proper ID band is a serious safety violation. When is the best time to verify dietary restrictions before blood collection? A. After collection. B. While labeling the tube. C. Before collection. D. When delivering to the lab. Answer. C. Dietary compliance must be confirmed before drawing to ensure specimen validity. Which of the following would be a critical error in patient identification? A. Relying only on verbal confirmation. B. Using two identifiers. C. Comparing ID band to requisition. D. Asking date of birth. Answer. A. Solely verbal confirmation without cross-checking is a common source of misidentification. What is the most reliable method to confirm identity of a sedated patient? A. Nurse confirmation and ID band match. B. Room number and wristband. C. Relative's word. D. Chart photo. Answer. A. When a patient is sedated, hospital staff and proper ID band are necessary for confirmation. For a pre-op patient with multiple armbands, which should you verify? A. Allergy band. B. Blood type band. C. Hospital ID band. D. Name only band. Answer. C. The hospital ID band contains the necessary identifiers for specimen collection. 
A pediatric patient refuses to give their name. What is the appropriate action? A. Verify with ID band and guardian. B. Skip the draw. C. Ask nurse to sedate. D. Proceed without ID. Answer A. Minors may not cooperate. Verify with ID band and guardian confirmation. Which test is most impacted by recent food intake? A. CBC. B. BMP. C. Glucose. D. INR. Answer C. Glucose levels vary significantly after food intake, requiring fasting for accuracy. What is the best practice if a patient is confused about the test being ordered? A. Proceed to avoid delay. B. Ask physician to explain. C. Explain the test yourself. D. Cancel the draw. Answer B. The ordering provider should address patient questions about test purposes. What documentation is required if a patient refuses a blood draw? A. Just verbal note. B. Written documentation and notification to nurse. C. No documentation required. D. Sign the requisition as refusal. Answer B. Refusal must be documented and communicated to healthcare staff. Which patient prep is necessary before a 24 hour urine collection? A. Fasting. B. High fluid intake. C. Detailed instructions and start time. D. Rest. Answer C. 24 hour urine requires clear instructions on collection timing and storage. A patient has altered mental status. What should you do to confirm identity? A. Ask nurse and check ID band. B. Use chart. C. Ask another patient. D. Skip draw. Answer A. When patient can't self-identify, verify with staff and ID band. Before a lactate test, what patient prep is essential? A. Apply tourniquet for 2 minutes. B. Ensure no exercise before test. C. Use alcohol to clean. D. Fast overnight. Answer B. Physical activity raises lactate levels and should be avoided before collection. Which patient factor can significantly alter cortisol test results? A. Sleep. B. Exercise. C. Time of day. D. Diet. Answer. C. Cortisol has diurnal variation. Timing of collection is critical. The phlebotomist is unsure about the patient's identity. What should they do? A. Ask nurse or staff and confirm with ID band. B. Go ahead and label manually. C. Guess based on schedule. D. Delay and discard requisition. Answer A. Confirm identity through approved methods before proceeding. Why should tourniquet use be minimized before lactate draws? A. Prevent hemolysis. B. Avoid falsely elevated levels. C. Prevent clotting. D. Reduce bruising. Answer, B. Prolonged tourniquet time can falsely elevate lactate concentrations. A patient is unconscious and has no ID band. What must the phlebotomist do? A. Postpone draw. B. Apply temporary ID. C. Notify staff and wait for proper ID. D. Proceed and mark as unknown. Answer, C. No collection should occur without proper patient identification. A patient provides their nickname instead of legal name. What should you do? A. Verify full name on ID. B. Accept the nickname. C. Ask for a witness. D. Refuse the draw. 
Answer A. Full legal name must match the requisition and ID band. When preparing for a timed drug level test, what should be confirmed? A. Time of last meal. B. Time medication was last taken. C. Fasting status. D. Medication brand. Answer B. Drug level timing is critical and based on last dose administration. What should you do if a patient vomits during fasting preparation? A. Cancel test. B. Proceed anyway. C. Inform nurse and possibly reschedule. D. Draw sample immediately. Answer C. Vomiting can affect fasting tests. Nurse should assess for test validity. Which test is most time sensitive regarding patient preparation? A. Blood cultures. B. Drug levels. C. CBC. D. BMP. Answer B. Therapeutic drug monitoring must be performed at specific times relative to dosing. If a parent insists their child is ready for a blood draw, but the name doesn't match the requisition, what should you do? A. Trust the parent. B. Verify with staff and documentation. C. Proceed. D. Use child school ID. Answer B. Identity verification must align with official records before collection. Before collecting blood for a triglyceride test, the phlebotomist should confirm A. Blood pressure. B. Recent fat intake. C. 12 hour fasting. D. Exercise habits. Answer C. Fasting is required to ensure accuracy in triglyceride results. What is the most serious risk of incorrect patient identification? A. Rejected specimen. B. Duplicate billing. C. Delayed care. D. Wrong treatment or diagnosis. Answer D. Misidentification can lead to critical medical errors affecting treatment.